So let's talk about energy balances. We, in the previous video, we checked out how the mass balances are important, why do we need them, and I told you that we eventually are going to need those for the energy balance. And many courses, maybe you have mass balance and energy balance in one course or maybe in two courses because they interrelate between each other. And what I want to tell you here before actually going to see is try to analyze what's happening here and what is the energy happening what is transfer or are we adding or what's happening okay so yeah let's go eventually what we want to study is the famous energy balance equation the type of system that we have and we want to understand what's enthalpy how to read enthalpy diagrams, graphs, or tables. And eventually we are very interested in fuels and combustion, especially their consumption and what other things such as environment. Let me give you a little bit more insight on each one of them. So you probably know that energy moves the world and it's the same case for chemical plants. We need energy in order to create reactions or processes heat something, cool something, so etc. So the first thing we analyze in the energy equation is that we can heat something. So here it goes. This is once again a black box. We don't know how a heater works, but we know you go in at a temperature, maybe 25 Celsius, something heats it, and the outlet temperature maybe, I don't know, 80 Celsius. So the first thing we do is how do we change temperature? What's the specific heat? What do we use? Eventually, we're going to understand that there is a change on enthalpy. Now, this is typically for a pressure which is constant, constant pressure. We're going to work in general with constant pressure all the way down. Now, eventually, guys, you know evaporators. We don't know how they work inside. But we do know that if we have water at one atmosphere and we bring it at 25 Celsius and we heat it up to 110 Celsius, we're going to have vapor because there is evaporation. This is called latent heat or using the energy equation with a change of phase. We want to understand how it happens and more importantly, what is the change of enthalpy required. Now eventually we're going to cover flashes and other binary systems such as maybe a simple distillation column or, I don't know, a crystallizer, etc. And this unit operation, the good thing is that once we know about changing temperature and once we know about changing phases, we are almost very far on our energy course. Eventually we want to cover a little bit more, let's say we want to understand what's an isothermal process and yeah, yeah probably you're probably telling me that if there is no temperature change there is no heat or energy involved and that is not always true actually latent heat which is this one is at one temperature probably you don't know guys but boiling water is carried out at 100 celsius same temperature but you do know that we need to keep boiling and boiling that water in order to convert it to vapor. Everything at 100 Celsius. And you will understand later that, well, even though we don't have a temperature change, we may have a change on energy. And also we will understand what's adiabatic and why are we so interested in adiabatic processes, especially when we want to change temperatures and involve other type of processes that favor adiabatic processes. Now guys, I told you about enthalpy or typically heat off. They love saying, the chemistry guys love saying heat of formation, heat of reaction, heat of solution. Well, that's actually only the enthalpy change of formation. So if I want to form carbon in solid state or CO2 in gaseous state, how much enthalpy do I need or how much heat will I need? Now for a reaction the same, if I want to produce B, and there's a change of enthalpy here, so I check out enthalpy initial, 
final enthalpy, I just need to make the difference and I got the change on enthalpy. That will be for a reaction. For a solution, exactly the same. I have A, I'm going to mix it with B and they produce, let's say, well, AB. And you know, guys, probably you're wondering, but where is the change of enthalpy? Yeah, sometimes when we mix substances, especially, let's say, water and ethanol, there is an increase of temperature. And why there's an increase of temperature? Because there is a change of enthalpy. Now, enthalpy, we've talked a lot of enthalpy, enthalpy, enthalpy. Where can we find enthalpy? Well, the first one is calculating it. You can change or calculate the change by raw calculations. It's... Uh, pain in the ass, yes, but eventually you get it. And eventually you can start using graphs or diagrams. So plenty of students or researchers or scientists already did what you do, which is essentially calculate all by hand all the changes. So you, instead of you actually calculating, you just check out for temperature and maybe you get a line right here and you got your enthalpy. And eventually, guys, tables. We have uh, the famous steam tables, which carry a lot of information of water and vapor at many temperatures, many pressures, and has a lot of data, but let's just take care of the enthalpy right now. And once we mastered how to do those calculations, we're going to work out on how to account for fuels, combustions, the famous low heating values, high heating values, dry scale or humid fuel, etc. What's the energy output? And of course, what's the environmental aspect of combustion or fuels? So for instance, you can see this right here, where well, that is not good, probably CO2 with other, a little bit, less socks, nox, but plenty of CO2, which you know, guys, increases the temperature of the Earth, which favors global warming. And finally, we do some on steady states, because all this previously was done on steady states, processes such as this one. As you can see, there is continuous flow of this uh, smoke, but in, in steady states means batch processes, such as maybe you have this tank, you have water, you go, burn it up, and it goes out as vapor. And maybe you're going to use that vapor later on in order to, uh, I don't know, heat something. You're going to pass it through and high te temperature vapor will go on, high, on low temperature vapor. That was the what do you see? Now the why of energy balance is essentially because we need to care about energy. Energy is expensive, guys, you know, the electricity or maybe heat or cooling down costs money. So it will be nice if we can maximize and optimize energy like this. So we're going to start doing some calculations on energy requirements for a process. For instance, let's say how to produce ammonia. Well, the typical I don't know, you need X amount of CO2 per kilogram of product. Or maybe you need X, let's say, Y amount of kilowatts per kilogram of ammonia. Even though this will be higher, very high number. Uh, yeah, we are interested in how much energy we need per process. Or maybe even unit, how much does that unit, heating unit, needs per time? So that's why we have a lot of kilowatts. Maybe you check out in your light bulb, you will see this is 80 kilowatt. What does that mean is how much energy it requires in order to operate, give light. But of course, it's also getting warm. So we have two, time of two types or even three types of energy there. Now we want to calculate also fuel consumption. How much fuel? And especially if you are doing optimizations, if we increase oxygen, or if we decrease maybe temperature, or typically you will also increase the temperature to increase the yield or conversion. Also, it's needed because we need to know if it's possible. If I tell you that we need a very huge condenser for a distillation column that is working with only, I don't know, 10 kilograms per hour, 
but we need I don't know maybe something stupid let's say 10 almost one ton of water per hour so is it worth it you need 10 kilograms of cooling water to work with 10 kilograms of feed well that's also interesting and once again it's the same utility requirements how much water do you need how much air because you're going to use air in order to cool stuff those fans you have in, at your home well guys we also have fans at the industry and they are huge and they give air air cools down stuff now we want also to make an analysis on cost how much is the energy consumption in a plant unit in a country maybe even also very important how much co2 are we burning i think about 80 percent is fuel from fossils so all that goes to co2 so if i want to hit 10 kilowatt that will be a very interesting question how much grams of co2 are we burning nowadays in usa or mexico or africa or whatever place you are check out how much is that worth maybe in a very in a very good place you will have i don't know you need three grams of co2 which i think is not that much but maybe in not developed country you will need i don't know maybe seven grams of co2 which means that you need probably 10 grams of fuel and this will be about maybe five grams of fuel anyway finally we want and we are very interested on temperature heat of course relates somehow to temperature so if we are interested in a process maybe if i tell you i got this flash separator and i need it at 75 celsius but we got the stream at 30 celsius well you're going to need to heat it how much heat do we need in order to get that temperature and finally equilibrium calculations not only we are interested in how much heat do we require the question will be how much are we going to separate if we achieve this temperature right here and that's what i wanted to show you guys energy balance i will say is a very basic course i will say that is every process, process engineer should take it mechanical engineers electrical engineers maybe even software engineers so they get to know how much energy they are spending when they're doing their engineering stuff maybe i don't know those servers guys that you think you're not maybe you say using a computer doesn't waste that much energy yes it does because internet needs of servers huge servers that because they work with electricity by nature they give off heat and we need to cool those because if we achieve a temperature higher i don't know maybe 50 celsius it will start destroying our equipment so we need to cool down that so that was for energy balance then we go for thermodynamics